You don't care how you treat other people. You don't fear God. You don't care if someone gets hit by a bus. But because we fear God and because we revere Him, we show compassion. We show love. We show mercy. We show kindness. We're willing to be wronged at times. See, one of the things that we understand is it takes work. But imagine the benefits of it. When you have a strong relationship with someone, it builds and strengthens you up. And you can have a relationship with someone, and that can spiritually give you the boost. Remember how a few weeks ago I said, you know, we're going to have a few lessons on re-energizing and rebuilding your faith and making you excited to help you regain some of that joy. God has chosen our relationships with one another to be part of our sources of joy. When Paul is writing to the different churches, what does he often say? You guys are my joy. Why does he say that? It's because our relationships with one another are to be joyful. And when we're closer together, guess what? We're listening to, we listen to each other's corrections and teachings and encouragement and mercy. Because we'll believe it. Because it's centered around trust. But I want us to think about how important love is. We often think about 1 Corinthians 13 and the definition of love. And in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul is starting out making known, here's how valuable love is. You may have a great faith. You may sacrifice and give everything you have. You may even give up your life and be a martyr. You may even know the whole Bible inside and out. But here's the fact. If you do not have love, all that is worthless. All of it is worthless. That's why I emphasize relationships. But think about this. Think about how he defines it. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 8, we see a definition of love. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now I want you to think about that. Because we often leave it at that. But do you know what the whole context of 1 Corinthians is as a whole book? The whole book of 1 Corinthians is actually centered around this concept of unity and love for one another. In 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 3, he's saying you shouldn't have division among one another because of who you're following. In 1 Corinthians 11, he says, you know what, you guys are having division because of this Lord's Supper. You're not waiting for one another. You're not considering one another. 1 Corinthians 12, he's emphasizing unity of the spiritual gifts and not looking down on each other or being envious of each other's spiritual gifts, but rejoicing in it. And in that, and then 1 Corinthians 13 comes about where he's talking about love. The whole concept of Paul defining love and emphasizing love is that he's trying to help the church in Corinth understand, you know what, the way to get rid of division and quarreling and criticism within the church is to have this biblical love for one another. And in doing so, you won't be bragging about who you're following. You won't be hindering the Lord's Supper. You won't be boasting about who has what spiritual gift. You'll just love each other. The whole concept of 1 Corinthians 13 and its definition is saying, this is the love for Christ's people should have for their fellow Christians in Christ. I mean, that's a huge message that he's giving. But look at how hard. How hard is it to have relationships like this? Is it easy to be patient with people? No. Is it always easy to be kind to people? No. Very good. We're hearing this. Is it easier to be envious or content? Envious. Is it easier to be proud and put down other people? Or is it easier to be humble and encouraging? Proud and put down other people. Is it easier to be rude or to control your tongue? Rude. Is it easier to be selfish or selfless? Selfish. Is it easier to be easily angered or self-controlled? Is it easier to keep a record of wrongs and hold a grudge, be vengeful and spiteful and bitter or forgiven? Is it easier to protect or to hurt? Is it easier to trust or to lie? Is it easier to hope or to cause people to feel like they'll never change? Is it easier to persevere through the hard times or to give up? When we love people as Christ has called us to love, love never fails. Let me say that again. Love never fails. It never fails with God's love for us because that's how he saved us. It never fails in our relationship with one another because that's how we keep each other saved and encouraged. Even loving yourself. So that you can love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love never fails. And we see that relationships in the church are so important. And in fact, Christ intended the church to be communal. We won't read this, but I want you to read Acts chapter 2 because in Acts the second chapter, we see that, that Peter is, is, and the apostles are making known this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then 3,000 people are added to their number that day. And then after they were baptized into Christ, what did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of the bread, which is the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And then after that, they, it mentions how they sold their possessions because they cared more about caring for one another's needs than, than what they had. They cared more about people than things. And also, they met daily with one another, and they ate together, they communed together, they had potluck together, they did all those different things, and they rejoiced in God's people. And because of that love, because of that rejoicing, because of what Jesus said about the church being one, about making known that all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, they had that kind of love, and as a result, the church grew in number. It greatly increased in number, as Acts says. Our love for one another matters because it affects the will of God. It affects God, people's ability to accept and understand the grace of God. Isn't that something that's amazing? Isn't that the purpose of our lives? Is to bring glory and honor and praise and worship to the one who is deserving of it and worthy of it. And we say we'll work. Well, we need to work on our relationships because when we work on our relationships, that will help bring in the harvest for Christ. That will help bring more people to Jesus. That will help people to have an easier understanding. Remember, most people nowadays in this new generation don't understand God. They don't know the Bible very well. But they understand the concept of love to some degree. And when they understand, hey, these people love each other, it makes them curious about the God whom they worship. That's why it's so important. So what about application? I want us to think about this. Now I want you to take a moment and think about your relationships with other people. Are your relationships with other people in the church strong? Do you know enough about people in their lives where you're carrying their burdens, you're praying for them, you're, you're willing, you're, you're able to allow people to come up to you and confess to you their sins because they can trust you? Are you one who's praying for them? You know what? Isn't it true that we always pray harder for those we care about? If your kid had a major surgery, would you be hitting your knees to the ground? Absolutely. Because you pray harder for those who you're closer to. If we want to improve our prayer life, we want to improve our relationship. Because I will know what to lift up to God on behalf of my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is why it's so important. How do I know that someone's struggling in their faith and is potentially wandering away from the grace that God has given them? I should know that. We need to invest in one another. Now, is this going to be easy? Is it going to take work? This is where character building comes in. 1 Corinthians 13, we went over it. That kind of love is hard. And it's one where you have to choose to love people. Just as, and that's exactly what agape love is. It's a love by choice. It's saying, I have the conviction and the character to carry it out. I'm going to love people this way. Are you going to be willing to give up your energy and your resources? Are you going to take people out? You know, sometimes being hospitable costs you something. What about your prayer life? Do you only pray about you and your wants and your needs in your life? Are other people surrounding you? If there's 60 people to 70 people in our church, and, I, and most of my prayer life is all about me, then I got my ratio wrong. Think about that. It should be 160th or 170th. Because I care about, I should be caring about my brother and sister in Christ as much as I care about myself. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's such a hard principle. What are some specific things you can do to build relationships in the church? You know, it's true. Half of people at least are going to be introverts. I'm an introvert by nature. I, I get nervous talking to you. I don't like going up to you and starting a conversation. I already think you guys hate me. You probably do. But, but here's the thing. Okay, everyone's laughing, so you guys do. Okay, I'll get my resumes ready. But, but here's the thing. We need to be active in loving people. One of the things I loved about Jesus is Jesus was known for loving the outcast, and he was one who pursued other people, whether it's a Samaritan woman.